Okay, I'm going to convene the uh, Michigan State University Board of Trustees meeting now. Um, the, the board has a, a resolution before it that contemplates two actions. First, accepting the resignation of President Luanna Simon, and second, appointing an acting president. <coughs> I'd like to make a, a few comments before the resolution is read. Uh, the board <coughs> Excuse me. The board will engage a comprehensive national search for the next president of Michigan State. As a part of that process, we will seek input from the MSU community, including faculty, staff, students, and alumni. <coughs> because a national search will take some time, the board will appoint an interim president. It is our desire that the interim president will be someone external to the university. Because the timeline for making this appointment is short, we will seek input from the leadership of academic governance, representing the faculty, and from the board's student liaisons representing the students. Until an interim president can be selected, the board must appoint a person to immediately serve as acting president. We expect that this appointment will be for a short duration of time, lasting only as long as it takes, takes us to seat the interim president. <coughs> it, is the, uh, it is the appointment of this acting president upon which we will act today. Uh, Trustee Byram, as chair of the policy committee, uh, will you please read the resolution? Thank you, Chairperson Breslin. Whereas Luanna K. Simon has tendered her resignation as president to the Board of Trustees, and whereas the Board of Trustees accepts her resignation as president effective immediately, and whereas the Board of Trustees has already commenced its search for an interim president, now, therefore, be it resolved that Bill Beekman is hereby appointed the acting president of Michigan State University, commencing immediately and continuing until the board appoints an interim president. And be it resolved that Mr. Beekman is hereby granted authority as acting president and during his appointment as acting president to discharge all duties and responsibilities of the president of Michigan State University under the university's bylaws. The resolutions of the board, university policies, otherwise under the law, and be it resolved that the chairperson of the board is hereby authorized to execute such documents and agreements as may be necessary or appropriate in connection with the implementation of the foregoing, with a copy provided to each member of the board. As chairperson of the policy committee, I move that the board hereby accepts the resignation of President Luanna K. Simon and appoints Bill Beekman to serve as acting president under the terms and conditions set forth above. There's been a motion and uh, support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, and congratulations, Bill. <coughs> Well, thank you, Trustee Breslin, uh, and thanks to the uh, Board of Trustees for uh, your confidence in, in me in this uh, uh, hopefully very uh, short period of time as we go through the process of uh, selecting a, uh, an interim president to, uh, to, begin, uh, to begin our, uh, our process anew. So uh, thank you uh, very much. I now have a statement that I'm going to read on behalf of the Board of Directors and uh, or on the Board of the Board of Trustees. And um, after that, we will have a time for uh, individual trustee uh, comments. <coughs> First and foremost, we apologize to the victims of Larry Nasser. One after another, they spoke out bravely and in open court last week. They asked for their voices to be heard, for responsiveness, and for action. We acknowledge their voices and say to the survivors, their families, and everyone in our community affected by the sexual violence that we recognize that change is overdue. <coughs> it is also clear to MSU that MSU has not been focused enough on the victims. 
Our hope is that there will be an opportunity soon to resume a dialogue with Council for the, for the victims to reach a fair and just resolution. The Board today discussed the following points and authorized the following actions. <coughs> We must also acknowledge that there have been failures at MSU, not only in our processes and operations, but in our culture, and we are united in our determination to take all necessary steps to begin a new day and change the environment at the university. The board has initiated a process to bring in an independent third party to perform a top-to-bottom review of all of our processes relating to health and safety in every area of the university and to provide recommendations on actions that we will implement to change the culture of MSU on this important issue. <clears throat> we understand that the survivors, their families, and the public have many questions about the Nassar matter. We have asked Attorney General, the Attorney General's office to conduct a review of the events surrounding the Nassar matter Today we are calling on him to conduct his review in, exp in an expeditiously manner, as uh, expeditiously as possible, and to appoint an independent third party to promote bipartisan acceptance of the results. Again, we are committed to taking the right actions to create a culture that provides a safe environment for all members of our community and the transition to new leadership will be a key component in helping us to change course. The board will play an integral role in these efforts and in making MSU a leader here and nationally in preventing sexual abuse. We cannot change the past, but we can and will devote our time and resources to foster healing and move forward together. Um, it wasn't originally planned, but um, we, uh, member of the faculty, Debra, Deborah Morardi, would like to make a comment, and so we acknowledge you. Thank you very much for allowing the faculty to speak, and thank you very much for the resolution that includes the faculty in the search for an interim president. That is very, very important, and the faculty um, will be happy to be part of that. Um, I will also want to thank Bill Beekman for taking on what is certainly a huge, huge task at a time that is very difficult for all of us. So just thank you very much for the support of the board for the faculty. Again, it's outside the norm, and I don't think any of you, the student leaders, expected to make a comment, but we didn't expect to include the, the faculty. If any of you would like to make a comment, um, now is your opportunity. I uh, echo the same comments that Dr. Moriarty made, and I look forward to working with Acting President Beekman and uh, being involved with the interim search process. Okay. <coughs> I have, um, I've read a board statement, and then we are now going to move to individual trustee statements, and I want to emphasize the board statement is the statement of the board. These are statements uh, of individual uh, trustees. So, Trustee Masalam, we'll start with you and I guess end with me. I'm sorry to the courageous survivors, the victims of the largest sex abuse case in American history. I am so truly sorry. <coughs> we failed you. To all current MSU students, alumni, faculty, prospective students, supporters, I'm so truly sorry. We failed you. This board has come across as tone deaf, emotionless, and lacking empathy. It has infuriated me. I am so truly sorry. We have failed you. Because of the hero heroism of Rachel Den Hollander, Lindsay Lemke, Katie Lorenz and all the other survivors, a serial predator has been given his death warrant. Hi. From Judge Aquilina, and for the first, first time in over a decade, this university will have a new president and athletic director. To all of the courageous survivors, 
Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for saying time's up. There are no words to express the regret that I feel in my heart for the pain you must feel. from the behavior shown toward you from this university and this board. Nothing that I can say may help you find comfort. But I truly hope that each and every one of you, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually are able to feel that you achieve justice and you find closure to this horrific period of your lives. We have a long road ahead of us to repair the damage which has already been done. We must restore the confidence and trust in this university. This must never happen again. This will never happen again. My commitment to stamping out sexual abuse on this campus is resolute. We must and will change the culture which allowed the serial predator to exist on our campus and to the culture which causes all these silent victims to remain in the shadows out of fear and helplessness. No more, not again. We are here for you to listen to you, to protect you, to defend you. We as a university need to define who we are. I alone cannot do this. The trustees alone cannot do this. Together, students, faculty, alumni, trustees must begin a conversation around who we are and what it means to be a campus that says, never again. Over the next couple months, I plan to initiate that conversation by listening to you. I will hold a town hall where students, faculty, alumni, and most importantly, our courageous survivors will have a chance to be heard. I will engage you in conversation to hear your thoughts and your ideas on how MSU can say never again to sexual abuse. I am making a commitment to you today to put in place a plan that makes MSU a sustainable campus with integrity. And we will do it together. I also encourage my fellow tr tr trustees in what has been stated in an effort to better ensure that this process is done with transparency to hire an external integrity and safety monitor to produce periodic reports on our progress. This monitor would be independent of the university and of the trustees and tasked with openly and honestly issuing reports to the public. We must ensure the safety and well-being of our university community and that our efforts to change our culture Say never again to sexual abuse goes uncompromised. Providing sunlight on what we are doing well, but more importantly, what we are doing not well is imperative. We must empower the victims of sexual abuse and opening up to the public about what we are doing to protect them is essential to accomplishing that goal. Before we hire a new president, I will demand that this person is committed to principles such as transparency, empowering sexual abuse victims, and to restoring the trust, respect, and pride we once had in our university. We need a leader who sets a tone and establishes a culture that says never again and demands that MSU is a campus with integrity. To the courageous survivors again, I say to you, I am so sorry, we failed you. But we must never fail again. I look forward to engaging in a conversation with all of you to hear your stories and to learn from your experiences. Together we must create a sustainable campus with integrity. I am committed to that idea and to saying never again. Spartans will. Thank you. Okay. Thank, um, <coughs> thank you, uh, Chair Breslin. Um, I mean, I think you realize that these comments from the board today are going to be personal. Um, I have some very personal comments as well. Um, this has been a very, very difficult time for the board. Um, I was elected to the board 12 months ago. Um, when I came on the board, the criminal matter was pending. The civil litigation had started. And then since that time, for the past 12 months, this board has been embroiled in that litigation. Um, I am a lawyer by trade, and as a lawyer, I felt comfortable, actually, in the litigation process in the sense that I knew the rules, I knew what the next steps would be, and in the back of my mind, I thought that this would be resolved in the litigation process. 
There would be depositions and discovery, and it would be overseen by the court. What I learned in the last two weeks was this is not about the litigation. That's only a part of it. What this is about is the culture of MSU, and I'm embarrassed to say that I learned that from, in some cases, young teenage women who testified in front of a court, who showed the courage to not hide behind the litigation and to actually testify and, in some cases, state their names with regard to this abuse. I watched that, and that changed me. And ultimately, it's going to change this university. And those girls are going to have the credit for that. I'm committed as a board member for however long I last on this board to make sure that we never forget what those young women said over the last couple of weeks. Because that's going to be the most important thing for us to move forward. I just want to know what I didn't hear them say. I did not hear them say, I want a lot of money. I did not hear them say, I hate MSU. I did not hear them say, I want to destroy MSU. In most cases, what I heard them say was, I want to love MSU again. I want to be a Spartan again. I don't want you to hate me. So. All I can say is, I don't hate you. This university doesn't hate you. I am proud of you. You will change this university, and you'll change it for the better. Um, my final comments are this. I am, I am not an MSU grad. I actually have a hard time saying that I'm a Spartan because I know what that means to my daughters. It's a very special thing to them. And that's what we took away from a lot of these girls, was their pride in this university. And we've got to find a way to give that back to them. All right, thank you. The voices of 156 young women were heard over seven days in court. Many of their names and faces are now familiar to me, as they are to most of you, and their stories are played over and over again in my mind. Last week, I sat in court and listened to their stories unfold. I am sorry. I am sorry that a person who called himself a Spartan, a person that you trusted, inflicted such harm on his victims under the guise of medical treatment. The university has been unresponsive to your cries. History is what it is, and now we must move forward and attempt to heal your wounds with our actions and our words. Chairman Breslin just shared with you the willingness on the part of the board for our legal counsel to work toward a fair and just resolution with the victims. As a member of this board, I'm committed to making this campus safe from predators, rape, and other unwilling acts. I am inviting victims to help us work collaboratively at MSU in, in being involved in this cultural shift. AG Bill Schutte has committed to a thorough investigation of MSU and plans to announce the details of such next week, once all victim statements have been heard. I encourage the AG's investigation to include a review of our policies and procedures. We need the truth. We need to know what went wrong and going forward to instill an environment on this campus that will never, ever, ever allow such behavior to go unchecked again. Again, to the victims and those who surround and love them, I am sorry. I'd also like to add that earlier today we learned of Mark Hollis's re um, retirement as athletic director. Mark Hollis is a man of integrity and a true Spartan. He caused us to think out of the box with his creative spirit. There are so many counts today that this is a very, very sad chapter in our history.
I want to say to the survivors that I am truly sorry that this happened to you and that Michigan State University played a role in that tragedy. I understand the public's outcry. We made mistakes. I made mistakes. I tried to work internally with the Board of Trustees and didn't raise my voice loud enough outside in the public space. That was a mistake. I've learned from that mistake and I will not repeat it. I intend to have a loud voice. This is about the victims. This is about changing the culture at Michigan State University that allowed, that allowed a predator to exist among us. Never again can this happen. Never again. And I am committed to do everything I can do and to raise my voice to make sure that we move forward as a university, as a university community, and that this never happens again at a place we call home, Michigan State University. God bless you all. Those victims, the compassion we have for them, you'll never know. I'm at board meeting talking to these board members. They talk from the heart, and they will protect you. They will protect this university. We love our home here. We love our university like loyal people do. We're awful sorry for the trouble we've caused those poor women. And we'll make sure we have everything in our power that never happens again. Good luck and God bless you again. I'm sorry to the survivors, their parents, their siblings, their future spouses, their current spouses. I'm sorry that MSU failed them. It's hard for me as a father to fully grasp how this, how this went unchecked for over 20 years. And it's not, it's not that we can just point a finger at one button and push and say that's it. And um, I don't know that we'll ever fully understand because I don't know what goes through people's minds. But I do look forward and committed to finding out the who, what, why, where, and when, what went unchecked, who knew what. In my heart of hearts, I really do not believe anybody here thought that Larry Nasser was the monster that he is, except for, unfortunately, the survivors. And no one heard their voice. And uh, that's tough to, tough to take as a father myself. So I'm sorry for, for that. The focus of this board, it's easy to go back and point fingers and what could have, should have done from the time we found out even in September of 2016. But the focus of this board going forward, and I think we're resolute in saying this, is that we need to look forward. We have external entities looking back to find out the details of how this happened. <coughs> But the focus of this board now and forevermore has to be to, under, to understand what we need to correct in order to ensure this never happens again. I have a daughter here. I have a daughter that, that dreams of coming here. And I want her to feel safe. And I want all of our daughters to feel safe here. MSU needs to be better than this, and we will be. We will be. It's going to take time to earn the trust back, but we're, we're going to be better. And uh, I just, my thoughts and prayers are to the, the survivors and their families, and I'm, I'm just glad they stood up and, and stopped this monster. Thank you. I first want to state that 
without even talking about a interview that I shouldn't have taken when I was asked to, because that week, this week, it should have been only about the victims and survivors. And for that, I greatly apologize. I've been on well, my degrees in elementary education. I walked in here, and I guess the first person I saw and hugged was my daughter. And I have three daughters and a wonderful granddaughter. And I'm very committed to, I always have been to my daughters and to young ladies with my degrees in elementary education. And I came here after being a school teacher. And for that, I very much apologize for beyond my choice of words. But what I more apologize for is my having a wrong emphasis. For me, in this week, to be talking about anyone or anything here at the university as opposed to my entire emphasis being the survivors and victims. And once you start something off in the wrong vein, no matter how you do it, you're already way behind. And for that, I very much apologize. It, sitting here at the table, <clears throat> you happen to witness Brian Musown, Mitch Lyon, Melanie, all the trustees with strong emotions and strong feelings. And I apologize to them because how I handled an interview put a target on their back. But as you see them today, you understand the total sensitivity and commitment of this board to besides feeling they were doing the right thing in the past to make certain a total commitment to how we're going to behave going in the future. And trust even sound, you know, have a big enough room when you have your town meeting because I'm going to be there with you. You know, because I've always said you can't solve a problem until you admit it, and you also can't leave a situation until you make it better. And I joined the Marine Corps out of high school. And one thing we prided ourselves is that if there was a cast or anything else, we stayed there and stayed with it to make certain we bring them back. And it's the same commitment that I have in this board. If our actions and my actions was, did, did not see something or act with a, enough aggression to keep all these victims we have happening. And the one commitment I have is to make certain that I stay here and redouble our work and redouble how I'm going to perform to make Michigan State University a better institution. And all I'm saying is that I'm truly sorry for our collective inaction, and I'm sorry for my inaction. And the statement that is by the board has made today is outstanding. And so I just want to say that we're going to do much better, and we're going to make Michigan State a poster child of how we deal with sexual abuse going forward. And I'm eager to work with the student leaders I'm eager to work with everyone to make this happen. Thank you. First, I, I want to offer my heartfelt thanks to the many women and young girls that have so bravely told the world <coughs> of the sexual abuse you suffered uh, from Larry Nasser. There's no way in the world that I can know the emotional pain you're experiencing and suffer. <clears throat> you have my sincerest apology that these acts occurred and occurred for so long by an MSU employee and for, for many of you that it occurred on our campus. <clears throat> you have heard us say that we will work to ensure that this never happens again. Well, for me, that is an acknowledgement and I acknowledge it, that our university has flaws in its processes, procedures, and lines of communication. We need and will get a thorough review from top to bottom in these areas, and then we need and will take the necessary actions to correct them. 
it is my belief that in the months ahead, some of the victim survivors could assist us in that work. It's my belief, my hope, that this is one pathway that MSU can be a part of in the healing process for the victims. <clears throat> to that end, the focus for MSU needs to shift from lawsuits to pursuing the right decisions to genuinely participate in helping victims and survivors with your healing. It was clear from the testimony, much of which I watched and listened to and read about, that part of your healing objective was knowing that changes would be institutionalized here and elsewhere, but particularly here at MSU, to protect future generations of children from sexual predators. MSU has an opportunity to assist victim survivors in achieving that objective. I want to take this opportunity to ask the Attorney General to announce his investigation as soon as possible. I'd ask that for his, I'd ask for his assistance be, because we believe he is best positioned to provide a thorough review and report on who knew what and when. And in doing so, we will help identify where and why we had failures. To assure, the, to assure the public that the investigation is viewed as free of politics, I ask him to consider appointing a neutral, independent party to conduct his investigation. I believe this step will further the victim's healing process and help restore public confidence. And so I'll now end where I started. You have my apology to the victims and survivors and my thanks for your courage in telling your stories. That's the end of my statement, personal statement. Mr. Beekman. With no other uh, action coming before the board, uh, we'll have a motion to adjourn would be in order. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>